guys, I'm Ash, I'm the owner of the 2020 base station Outback Caravan. This is a 24 foot long band and today uh, to start off with we'll be showing you how to unhitch and hitch it back up. So we'll start by doing the unhitching of the band. So first thing we do, we grab our jockey wheel which is stored in the front compartment of the caravan. We'll show you that in a few minutes. Generally put it on the highest setting of the jockey wheel. Hook it up like so. Very important, make sure the handbrake is on. So when you do unhitch, it's not going to roll away on you and give you some dramas. Pull the safety pin out. Keep that very important part of equipment for keeping your caravan secured to the back of your car. Pull, pull the accessories cord out. Undo the D shackles and the chains. Right now we can go ahead and undo the caravan by winding the jockey wheel up. So you got a bit of clearance between your toe ball and the hub of the caravan. There you go, you always give yourself a bit of clearance, maybe an inch or two above the table. Alright guys, so now we've got our caravan on hook from the vehicle. In the front compartment of the caravan you'll find that there is a crank bar for your stabilizers, similar to this one. We'll lower our jockey wheel down so we get a nice level on the front of the caravan. You can use the spirit level, but I just turn a quick one by eye today. On the caravan, it's pretty straight, nice and flat, as you can tell, nice little. What you do here, there's four of these, four of these stands. So you've just got a latch, you pull it out, release it, drop it down, and then you wind it down until it secures to the ground. until it takes a bit of the weight off the van and then the same thing goes to the back one and there's two on the other uh, other side same spot so if you get to a cam side and you notice that the ground underneath it might be a bit unlevel because you're not on an actual pad these stands also have three different three different set points so you can allow the angle for whatever the ground may be underneath here generally you want to have them facing backwards Hit the ground, just come up there and just take it, wind it down until it takes the weight so it stabilizes the back. So when you're walking in the back, there's no rocking or anything else. But yeah, if it's a flat ground, same thing. Put a crank bar in there, there's a thread on the end of it, and just wind it down so it takes the weight of the caravan. Just like that. Right, so now we're going to go inside and set up our slide out and then show you how to set up our front double bump. Follow me. Okay. Right, so on the keys here, the gold one is for the main door. Plug it in like so. Open the door the way you're going to enter the caravan. Underneath here is a step that just slides out. Always make sure once you have packed the van up, that goes back in so you don't slide to it. Alright, right, so now we've made our way into the caravan. This is the isolator switch. Whenever you're not using the caravan, please turn it off. Very important, you'll drain the batteries. So the slide out. To operate that, you turn the switch on. Then there's a in and out button up the top here. Hold it on in all the way until it stops. You can hear it like stop extending and then after that, like leave it for a couple of seconds and take your finger off. 
There you go. Oh, so you press out, obviously, you can now the Slide out, slide out. There you have it, just like so. Right, so now we're gonna place, uh, pull the front bunks out, and I'll show you how to do that. On the front of each keyhole, there'll be a number, D23, and on the keys it'll have that exact number. So we got Put key in there and unlock the front. Always make sure they're locked when traveling. Is that one? So we lift to the front. Lift the front of the hood up. So now we have our hood on unlocked and opened up. Now gently pull down the front face for the double bed. And go inside and we'll show you how to prop it out. Now we've lifted the front of the hood in the caravan, we can now go ahead and set up the front double bed. There's this bar you'll find, normally on the lounge or either beside the back of the lounge is the propping out the front double bed. In that forward. And well, there you go, that just clicks straight back up and you'll see a hole, there's a latch on there. Push it in. Oh, there you go, now there. So now we've got our front double bed assembled. We just got to, you'll find the zippers on the mattresses, just to keep them separate so they don't fall apart while you sleep. Simple zipper system, plug it together. And now just zip same thing when you go to pack it back up, unzip them, pull the mattresses out. I normally take the mattresses out and just put them on the couch so then it's easier to fold the front double bed back in. Right, so coming to the back of the van, we've got four single bunks in the back. They're just on a simple hook system. Pull that down. Find there'll be a ladder underneath the mattress on the top bunks. They clip into the latch here. Always make sure they're secured. Keep on on there, you don't kids falling down. And you get a couple of side rails so you don't roll over bed at night. And that's how you set the top bunks up. Same system for the bottom bunks, they just unhook and you fold them down. And here you'll also notice there's sunroofs and it's going to let some air in. So there's a latch here, push the button in, pull the lever forward and you'll find they'll have their own little spot they'll lock into. And then there'll be a, yeah definitely when you go to leave again, make sure you put your windows down, push them up above that button, make sure they're secured. If the window, if the hood is up, you can use a fly screen, it's got a fly screen there as well, stops any bugs coming in at night. If you don't want the sun in your room in the morning, pull a blind across. That's it. Right, so now we've unlocked the latches, open these door bars up, same on the other side. Well, make sure you hold the back door so it doesn't just drop down in there because there's a real weight there with the tire on it. There you go, we're in the back of the caravan. Always make sure these cables are on, especially if you're going to use the back for a platform, decking, seating area. And if we are on motorbikes up later, I'll show you how to take those off and then we'll assemble that later on. Alright, so these cables here, if you do have motorbikes and you do want to take them in the back of the caravan, because this is what the caravan is specifically designed for. The whole latch drops down. Obviously, you put, yeah, put your bed bunks back up, hang them all into the upright position. You'll notice that there's latches on the floor. You can fit generally three bikes in there. Tie them down. When you tie the front wheels, tie the back wheels through these latches as well, just to keep the bike secure. And it's very simple. I take my motorbikes everywhere with them, so yeah, that's the main reason why I bought this caravan. Uh, 
right, guys, welcome back. So now we're going to be showing you how to use the front hooks. There's a toggle down the bottom. Just loosen that up. One on the other side. Loosen that one up. The bottom toggle, that is. Right, now we've undone our bottom toggles. There's a lock and unlock latch here. Put it into up to unlock. So you hear it click. And up here, there's normally a strap there, but it's recalled. So we're just gonna show you how to use it if you do get stuck without the strap. So you pull aside. Then generally it's easy with two people. I'll go down the other end and start that one as well. Same thing, put the latch up. Just pull the side of the arms in case the, the cord, the cord does get stuck a few times if you roll it up too fast. But generally, you use the tail end of the cord, pull it out. Slide it all the way out until it's fully extended. Fully extended. Coming this way. Now that the annex is out, we'll slide these support bars up. They just clip in like so. And then that bottom toggle we loosened up, tighten them back up just to give that a firm support and now your annex won't retract. Right. Right, so if you pull up anywhere, you're only there for a short amount of time, I recommend just using the annex the way it's set up now. It's still attached to the caravan, but if you are starting somewhere long term, I recommend you Put the legs out and you set them up so you've got more of, a, more of an area to entertain and whatnot. So to, to do that, push this lever back, it'll pop the legs straight up. Trailer's not only there. And you just lean your leg back like so. Tighten that, make sure that nice firm extension on the pole. Come down to the other one. It's always a lot easier with two people doing it. Once again, one bit of latch. And pop it out like so. You might only have a slight incline back towards the camera just so it can take a bit of tension. <coughs> Loosen the toggle up here and you can push that extension bar out to keep this sail nice and firm. So we've, got, so we've arrived at our campsite, it could be a caravan park, it could be a lake, it could be wherever. If you've got a powered site in the front compartment you'll find we've got a 15 amp, 15 amp power lead, it's about 15 metres long. Most of your powered sites, the power lead is only about 5 metres from the caravan anyway. Grey water hose with an attachment for the showers and our same drink, same drinking water hose as well. Oh, we'll show you how to install these. Follow me, guys. Alright, so now we're going to set up our grey water waste pot. On your campsite, there'll be a pit not too far from the caravan usually. You see this two piece attachment here, it's got open ends. They'll just slide onto the two dump, dump pipes on the bottom of the caravan. It's a pretty simple setup. Obviously, I'm threading, tapping it there. Tighten it up. If it does leak, it's not going to leak too much because it's only just taking the water that comes out of the showers and that. Nothing to be worried about. Then you just run that to wherever your pit is. Right, so now we're going to install the water to the bed. As you can see, I've got two hoses. Sometimes your hose could be a bit further, than, a bit further away from the bed than you anticipated. 
It's so always carry double as 250 meter lengths here. What I do, once you connect to your tap, I put my filter in. This is a clean water filter, so if you do want to drink out of the kitchen sink in there or cook this, or use water for any kind of purpose, just use your filter. But if you've got your own bottle of water like we do, we just use these hoses for mainly showers and whatnot. So you need to connect the other hose to the end of your filter. White key, the white plastic keys. That's to unlock the cover for your fresh water. So if you don't unlock it, you can go straight in as well and plug straight on there. But if you're going to be somewhere where you don't have water, these are your water tanks. Just pop these caps off, and that'll fill your tanks up to the left and right tank. Generally, just click straight under there. And you won't use any of the tank water. It'll just be running straight from the powered saw here at. All right guys, now we're going to connect the power to the van. As you can see on the side here, it says power inlet. This here will be connected to your powered side, power post at the caravan park. Just fix them like so. There you go, it's a 15 amp lead and that goes straight on that. There's a rope here. Pretty important so if people do walk past your caravan instead of them accidentally kicking the lead and pulling the power out, just tie, it, tie a double loop, hang it off the side here, there's a little hook for it. That's, so if anyone kicks out, then I'm going to pull your power out of the caravan. Alright, so now we've connected the water and the power and other power supplies and gas. We use this for hot water, cook, the stove cooktop and a few other things, refrigerator. So, you, this, this is the valve, this one, you turn it to your left, it'll indicate which bowl you're using by the point of it. So you turn your gas on, always turn it off while traveling because it can cause an explosion. Generally, I'll run my fridge on gas just so it cools quicker and the 12 volt power doesn't do much for it. It takes ages to cool down, so get to a powered site, run on gas, I'll show you how to use that gas system in the fridge soon. Alright, so coming back into the van to show you how a few of the appliances work, like the gas cooktop, uh, the bathroom. What we need is lights at night. So these are your light panels. As you can tell, there's, a lot, there's lights for each different area in the caravan. This is another light for your main area. There is a main main switch, you can turn all your lights off at once, that's the bottom one, but yeah, these these buttons are inside and outside the top ones, and then the, inside, and the bottom panels are the inside lights. All right, so moving along now, we've got the microwave in this particular caravan. The, there's a sink which also doubles up as a cutting board, the, the sink cover, and we have our three burner gas top. The microwave is pretty simple. Most people know how to use a microwave. I won't go in too depth about that. This here, it's a simple hot and cold system sink. And lots of water is hooked up, obviously, it'll work. This is your gas cooktop. Same thing as pressed down like a barbecue. And always make sure if you are traveling, the gas is turned off and disconnected. More lights for the kitchen, obviously, and the back half and underneath there. Up here, up here we have our plastic cups, plates, bowls, and other kind of eating utensils. And then in these drawers, you'll find dishwashing liquid for the sink. Fry pans, for obviously, for cooking. Lots more knives, cutlery. Some more walking utensils. And then you've got two foot mats, so if you are going anywhere, I recommend using a foot mat just so you know, the van's in pretty dirty real quick if you don't want your feet when you come in. So at this stage you're putting up the mess and underneath here we've got a kettle, a toaster, and in here it's a spice rack. So 
keeps all this stuff from sliding everywhere while traveling. So this caveat here, especially if you're hiring it during summer, even winter, it's an inverter, it's a Dometic aircon. There's a remote we keep for that, it's just here. Same thing, it's like a general aircon. To turn it on, it's power. There's to turn it off, obviously power off. We have the TV remote in here, and we have also the two, some batteries for these light panels. So if you do get stuck out there, you can just pop these, pop these off, slide that out, You'll notice there's a couple of these little batteries, they just, they're very easy to replace just in case you get stuck with no lights. It would be only from the switches because they're not hardwired. Right. Power on the front here, there's, a, there's the button, there's the on off button that will show you like what on the, at the moment it's on gas. Why it's got the little teardrop symbol that means it's gas. If you press this button, this button, the square, you'll see the outline square on the digital display pad that says now we're running on power through the caravan. And if you press it again, that's running on battery and that's generally what people will do when they're traveling. If your fridge is cold already, the battery will keep it mostly cold to your next destination and once you, once you get there, probably put it back on gas and cool your stuff down. That's it. Right, so this TV, JK, I've put this one in because it has a tele telescopic arm on here so you can watch it whether you're in the lounge, in the front double bed, and also we'll go outside later and I'll show you there's another TV compartment, so if you're entertaining outside and the kids want to watch TV, I'll show you where to set it up. Right, so as you can tell, another cabinet, more cabinet space here. We keep toilet paper, and all other kinds of cleaning products in there, garbage bins, garbage bags, and chemicals we'll use for the port loop, and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Down here you'll notice there's USB points and power points. They all only run if you are on a powered sort, so your kids can charge your iPads, plug their phones in, whatever. This here is also another telescopic stand, and it's just hooked, hooked on by this lock brace here. You just unscrew that and undo it. And that TV will clip straight on so the kids can be in, in, the, in the back of the caravan watching a movie or playing a game with it all the way. Very simple. Alright, so if you're out on the road for a few days and you notice that the toilet, there will be a flashing light on top of the toilet that will tell you whether you, um, your capsule, your septic's too full. Very simple setup. Undo the latch in the back compartment here. Pull that orange handle, slide it out. And take it to the waste point at the caravan park, wherever they may have that. Undo your, undo your cap here. Go to your waste point, press that button. This is the air release so you can get out whatever rubbish is in there. And give it a rinse off, put the cap back on. This is also the cap that I'll use to Put the aqua chemicals, so I only need probably about a quarter of a cup, pour a quarter of a cup, and it'll, it'll tell you down here there's different, like 60 mil, different levels for the cap. 60 to 70 mil are pretty good. And then with a litre of water, so you fill the cap up, pour it in through the top, put the cap back on. You can also put the water in there. But normally you put about a litre in there. There's also a twist top on the top of the toilet, so you can add your water in there or in through the same place you put the chemical, you can put them both in the same spot. Depends how you want to do it, doesn't really matter. That goes back in there. So it's yeah, roughly a quarter of a cap of the blue, the blue cam, aqua cam chemical. And a litre of water, about two litres, don't be too shy, but slide that back in, lock it up, and that's how you use the toilet. Alright, so that little TV you see inside, it's got three different um, telescopic stands. Also it has this one, so you can watch your TV outside and entertaining. And it comes with a, serv a 
the sternary as well. Coming this way. Grab a look, there's our antenna point for your TV to plug into. I'll show you how to hook the antenna up. This here is the antenna. Wind it up, just like a closed line system. So if you come through here, it's just through the skylight with where your antenna is. So once you've had your antenna up and you've watched TV and you're about to pack it up, you'll see there's a there's a point on the top of the, the winding and lap attachment. It's spring loaded, pull this down. This is what adjusts your antenna to turn left or right, backwards and forwards. Make sure the two points are lined up and very simple, just wind back down for towing. This is a 12 volt plug for like your AUX cords and that also has a power too so if you run a stereo or any other kind of power generator just plug straight in there, that's the power outlet and your aux power. Right, so this grey panel, that is our circuit breaker for our little silver key you'll find on the keys that we'll give you for Warren. These will be the ones that will undo the server here. So the bar, have the beer, you've got your own bar area now. And same thing once you finish using it, just pack it back up. Lock it in. And that's that, simple as. Alright, so now we've used my had a run through on how to use most of the appliances, how to hitch it up, how to unpack it. We're going to start by taking down the annex. So you lift this up, flip it back into this latch point down here. Same thing on the other end. Alright, that's it. Back to the latch point. Undo our toggle, our support frame. Loosen that up. You'll notice there's two little clip pins on the end here. Just push those through. Always bring, always bring the support bar back down. Same on the other side. All right, so now we're about to pack up. What we do to collapse the front double bunk area is unzip our mattresses again. Well, we fold those up like so, just so they're out of the road when you collapse the front bunk. Pull your support bar out. We got the front to show you how to shut the latch. Shut the front panel up. Make sure the canvas is not stuck between the carabine and the edge of the frame for a bit. Tuck it and slowly fold it back on the side. As you can see over here, it's the canvas over the port, but it's pretty easy. Pull it back out, tuck it in. Yeah, that should close up. So bring our front hood down. Got our keys, D20 screws in front. Always lock the front hood in case it does for light or trouble. Look at those. All right, now we're going to slide the annex back in. Make sure there's nothing interfering with where the couch is back into the caravan, make sure we're nice clear area. Once we start bringing the car once you start bringing the slide head in, do not take your finger off the button until it's fully come back to where it's supposed to be. So, so. Seconds. Should know 
but also another thing we've had with this caravan is slide out if you are going to use the kitchen area for a double bed the slide out does extend a little bit too far we're talking jake at the moment and try to get a problem assessed but if you are going to use it what you do is once you push the slide out all the way out bring it bring it in maybe 100 mil so that this table can slide down by this latch there's a spring underneath collapse the whole table but it needs to come back in front of this area you can see where it's been jammed on the door jammed on the edge of the seat frame but yeah that's the only small issue you'll get if you're trying to use the double bed area now shutting the back door back latch pops your cables up obviously Careful to shut the doors, the cables lock so on outside the van. Put your latch back down, turn your lock bar in, latch it, and the purple ones lock the back door. it's locked at all times especially if you're in the car park or something no one should get any grab your stuff put the kick back put the stand in and that's us so we're ready to go always double checking to make sure your gas has been turned off like so make sure your gas is on while traveling because it's pretty dangerous and there's nothing hanging off your van, there's no leads, no hoses connected, still everything should be safe to go. Alright guys, I'll use the reverse camera, obviously you don't have the reverse camera, make sure you have a spotter when you're reversing back on your trailer. Very simple once again. Wind the jockey wheel down so the vehicle takes the weight. Take the safety pin out. Pin battery, that's the first thing I always do. It's the safety thing holding your caravan to your car. These chains, the latest ones with an emergency brake cord on the D shackle. Always put that through the, the bolt and you tie it on. Power cord in, of course, obviously, make sure that's in. And then your jockey wheel. You put the jockey wheel in the back of your car or in the front of your car, it doesn't really matter. Okay, you want the back of it. And the last thing I always check is your handbrake. You won't go far if it's on anyway. So. 
and race off. And that's it. Have fun, guys. See you out there.